are here to talk to you about how we can create pathways for successful reentry for uh, your incarcerated populations or the populations that you serve. It's all about using secure technology that we have available through a variety of our manufacturing partners and, of course, Nucleos, in order to support Pell expansion and your education and reentry goals. So that's why we're here today. Uh, what we'll be talking about really literally is, is a, a 50, uh, 45 to 50 minute presentation with a demonstration of the technology, and then we'll go into Q&A. So we're looking forward to covering these, these items off. If you think about um, what it takes to, to be in this business, um, IT1 has been 20 years in, uh, in IT specifically. Uh, we are a solutions aggregator. We scan the environment for the best solutions we possibly can provide from a variety of OEMs. We integrate them and provide them as a solution through multiple contracts for SLED and FED. Uh, we had to get our ISO certification, so we are a very disciplined uh, organization internally, ISO 9001-2015, a host of security certifications as a result of our work with uh, the federal government. And we're a full service IT solutions provider specifically focused on corrections and public uh, safety. Um, Caleb's here from Nucleos. Uh, I've been working with Nucleos for a few years. They are focused on solutions for social impact, not to make a whole bunch of money, to really have great outcomes. They focus on driving outcomes they're bringing education to underserved populations. They're passionate about going behind the wall and helping incarcerated folks to get a, really an opportunity to, to change their lives. And what we're doing for the staff that is involved with uh, programs is how to leverage technology as a force multiplier whilst maintaining security and safety uh, in facilities. Between IT1 and Nucleos, we have a shared vision for this project, and it's really to improve post-release outcomes for the justice involved. I personally have worked in corrections for about 12 years now, and I was working on the for-profit side, making a lot of money off of inmates, friends, and family. And I wanna make sure that we're now focused on incarcerated people having an opportunity to move forward. Nucleos is specifically involved with that, specifically designed to do that. And in fact, Caleb, a humble person, is the CEO of a not-for-profit uh, out of New York City that is uh, designed specifically to help uh, the justice involved get a better outcome and actually have opportunities going forward. Um, if you think about the challenges that we have in the correction space, it's about uh, increasing access for high quality education programs. There's a lot of education out there that can be provided by third parties. Specifically, we're seeing some things being provided by uh, jail communications programs, some interesting things out there where it really is, uh, it can be free, but the quality or access is still not there. So it's really about providing high quality education programs from a variety of sources, accredited programs, and being able to access those programs once you are released. Uh, it's about measuring outcomes. It's about tracking progress and, and how people are uh, interacting with the systems, uh, how they're uh, working with multiple programs, and how we can share that data responsibly and actually take aggregated dat data and make sure that that is being re reported accurately for a number of reasons, funding, justification of programs, uh, additional headcount, and being able to uh, ensure that there's sustainability in that program. And then ultimately, we're all faced with keeping costs affordable. Every single one of us is, is uh, faced with that burden, especially in a time when labor is going up and the availability of, of labor is, is uh, becoming a shortfall. If you think about it, we had some additional uh, challenges through the, the pandemic. And you know, I reflect on this from a technology perspective and having been on, on travel and serving corrections agencies all through the pandemic, because you guys in corrections actually never could take, take off. And, and actually, you had to say that the pandemic was not affecting you as far as your workforce. You still had to do three shifts 
you still had to do what you were doing. Well, we found out that in pre-COVID times, we had a lot of reliance on physical classes, even in K through 12, it was highly applicable also in corrections. We relied on in-person teaching and we had limited capacity in our classrooms and those teachers can only teach a certain number of people any given day, as we well know. Well, in both environments, both K through 12, college and secondary education and in corrections, we realized that there was an availability to do blended classroom, which was a bit in person, a bit online and maybe some distance learning or correspondence courses. We actually learned as a teaching cadre that we could be facilitators as well as for, for e-learning and correspondence, as well as a teacher in the classroom. And what we found in all environments across the country is that we could actually scale more and have a flexible capacity through the leveraging of technology. Great technology is out there. Um, when you think about it as a, a collective, we came together and content providers started delivering content, Pearson, Macmillan Press, et cetera, uh, for K through 12, uh, obviously also for corrections. Um, people were having to use new software platforms. They were having to think about how to use Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting, Teams, uh, different LMSs that they hadn't used before, Blackboard, et cetera, and things had to change. They had to use their existing hardware in a different way. They had to think about hardware in a different way, and they had to empower their teaching cadre um, to be able to access distance learning with really high quality uh, access and hardware. And ultimately, that required IT services, the IT teams, to strengthen, uh, become more adaptive, and actually do some things that were a little bit uncomfortable for them, uh, but, but ultimately had great outcomes. Uh, when you think about it, and we've done a lot of studying uh, in this, and this is not an exhaustive, exhaustive list of the goals of corrections, but it's at least these, which is improving education outcomes. And we've heard this over the past 10, 12 years, uh, Caleb and my journey for the past four years. It's about education outcomes being really tangible and, and really proof is in the pudding and you're not gonna keep investing if something doesn't work. The other thing that we heard was it had to be a secure solution. So everything that was going on had to have the utmost security and that's really was challenging, especially with having to put solutions together really quickly. What we also did, uh, we found is that um, corrections uh, agencies were having to do more with less. And we had people who were on sick outs. There was a lot of, you know, uh, really just changes in staffing levels, people who just decided that they were ready to retire. But we had to have that same level of administration and the process, it still had to be maintained. Uh, and then the other thing that happened was funding. Uh, you know, we had unprecedented uh, changes in funding, tax base reductions, uh, availability of funding, and changes in, uh, in the legislature and even our government. And it was about finding alternative sources of funding. And, and that really came to bear as well. And good news is people found them. When you look at what the biggest change was, is Second Chance Pell, SCP, and um, the, the PEP programs being given the, the new life, the new breath of life, means that as many as almost a half a million people are gonna have access to Pell Grants who are incarcerated. So this is a, a major change, a major source of fun, funding. However, it doesn't come without its um, need to, again, be very rigid in the way that you adapt to the program. And one area is um, creating programs that, uh, that really are focused on meeting the correction space, the requirements therein, and adapting existing programs. And so some of those challenges are that, for instance, a course must be approved uh, by an accrediting agency, and it's going to have to meet some federal requirements. So for instance, it must lead to the opportunity for a job once released. 
Um, and that's, that's, that's obviously a very logical step. You need to get approval from your correctional facility or the FBOP or the state in which you're trying to introduce that program. And we do have questions, we'll take questions in a few moments. I, I do hope uh, you, you will allow us to do that later on. Um, the last thing is the federal government education department uh, will need to approve any program and make sure that that is um, a source of education that they can approve for the Pell funding. So there will be nuances and not every incarcerated person, unfortunately, will be eligible uh, for this. So they'll even have to go through a federal application to get financial aid. And the financial aid application is not actually really catering to the incarcerated population. So there's some things that need to change with all of those elements too. Luckily, we have a little bit of time because this is uh, probably middle of next year, uh, fall of 2023 before that uh, comes into place. Um, one of the things that's gonna happen is that if you're a correctional agency or if you are a state college, you're gonna be approached by either partner. And there's gonna be a lot of requests like, I want your program to be in our facility or you're a facility and a university or a college or community college will actually come to you and say, hey, we would like to put our program into your facility. So there's gonna be that going on. The next thing you're going to find is that you may have in a specific state location, multiple providers, which will have different systems that all of their classes reside on. Now, pretty much at this standpoint, every single college, every single uh, community college, everyone has a distance learning program and they have a learning management system that manages that. There are about five major ones. So you're gonna to need to think about how you integrate with those learning management systems to be able to access the Pell Grants or to be able to provide quality education that can then translate to outside the gates. You need to be able to provide an expandable platform so it can't be set and forget because un unfortunately what will happen is everything will change with software and you need to be able to go from year one to year two to year three. Um, and that is going to be a, a continual thing that we'll be chasing uh, as partners together. We will, we will be chasing that, but we have solutions to be able to do that. You're going to be able to need to secure a video classroom solution so that the outside world can get in, but it's very regulated and very managed, very maintained, so that you can do blended learning. And that's one of the things that they're saying. Will the colleges be able to deliver an experience that is exactly the same as an in-person experience? It's never going to be exactly the same. However, you can replicate it to almost uh, identical and give all of the opportunities that exist in an in-person environment, such as access to a library, access to the instructor uh, message board, uh, but not access to students to, for student-to-student -student communications. All of these considerations will have to be taken into, into account in order to create the full solution. The other thing that is incumbent, I think, in this whole thing is using the same technology platforms uh, inside the facility as the student will then need to progress to upon release so that they don't have to relearn or reuse or uh, uh, reduce their use I actually get access to the same platforms, the same level of technology, the same standards. And then ultimately, it's about uh, connecting people with pathways for reentry, giving them access to employers on the way out so that when they leave, especially in today's environment, they actually have a job. There are employers out there that are absolutely itching to get access to uh, this particular uh, employment opportunity for, for these folks because um, they are moldable. They've shown that they're very um, reliable and very thankful for the opportunity that they're given once they have the right education and the right equipment to go forward. And then finally, 
uh, it's providing hell uh, for credit uh, that people are going to need for continuing education, which is uh, also going to need uh, to translate uh, to the outside so that they can use those credits. If you look at uh, what we have as far as an education technology stack uh, for Pell, you're going to need to increase education outcomes, have security, and have admin uh, efficiency, obviously all for the right price. If you're thinking about the increased education outcomes, it's about access to high quality content and using uh, technology to filter that content in, a, in the right way so that it is accessible for those behind the wall. Um, increased time to learn, unfettered access. Uh, when you have time on your hands, and obviously it's a structured environment and you do have specific things to do during the day, we want to not have uh, specific times for access, but you can do homework at night, just like we do at work. So use uh, devices online, offline, and use the instructional staff that's available after hours where you can get one-on-one -on -one counseling, et cetera. And then the final thing around this is really, how do you motivate people once they're behind the, the wall to do this? And it's about having the ability to see, if I do this, I set some goals and I achieve them, I'm moving closer to a really good outcome for myself. And there are uh, a number of ways to do this. There's the old learn to earn way, but you know, ultimately it's having tangible outcomes for a pathway to success. For security, you're obviously gonna have to have firewalls, you're gonna have to have intrusion detection, logging of all sort of messages that go out of the system so that you can actually track through that using AI to make sure that people aren't communicating any kind of negative uh, or harmful messages. And then uh, security filtering, filtering within applications and within the platform and constantly pen testing, which we do. Uh, and then finally, when you're doing administrative efficiencies, it's all around uh, making sure that you can view everything across your universe of applications that you have from your standard programs that you have in place now to uh, the new college programs, to any kind of re-entry programs and so on and so forth. As we go through the whole stack that you bring to bear, it's about being able to, to manage that uh, plethora of, of stuff and actually being able to administer it across the board through a single interface. What we're gonna do now is really just talk, uh, in, in, in essence, we're providing the opportunity for a secure internet so I used to call this the prison wide web, the PWW, but really and ultimately we're leveraging technology that enterprises use to secure their own infrastructure. It's about having free access to education as well as Pell uh, access so that you can use those funds for yourself. And, but ultimately not charging the incarcerated people for this service. It's about having a blended learning opportunity in-person, synchronous, asynchronous with, with no um, teacher involved. It's about having dedicated devices, in our opinion, that are for education only. I know it's for education. I know I have unfettered access. I know it's mine for free. It's about having an expandable platform that works on existing devices or new devices or new devices that haven't been even uh, invented yet. It's about having accredited courses so that those accreditations transfer to the outside. It's about having a learning record that moves with the incarcerated person, whether they go from one facility to another and then out, uh, for instance, uh, incarceration to halfway house to uh, fully released and having that learning record move with them through, through the cycle. And then finally, it's about being able to personalize it to yourself. Now, I've spoken a lot. I want to now move over to Caleb, who is going to show us the fruit of Nucleos' labor and the simple system that solves this problem for you. So over to you, Caleb. I'm going to stop sharing now. Thanks so much, Ian. Fantastic job. Can everyone hear me okay? We can. Yes, sir. 
Okay, perfect. Um, so thank you so much, Ian. I wanted to go ahead and pull up the software. So as Ian said, um, this is the Nucleos platform and we're um, on a mission to promote a more just society through education and training. I'm just gonna kill my video just for bandwidth sake, but so this is, I'm gonna show you the admin view and then also the learner view. Um, and if you do have questions, please feel free to put those in the chat as we can get to those afterwards as well. And so here through this dashboard, you can really see uh, the home screen of Nucleos, right? And so um, as an admin, if you're an education director or someone accessing this, what you would do is you can go straight to these three bars here at the top. Um, and it's very simple actually to create your account settings. So as you can see here, uh, my name, my email, you can save changes and then also enable or disable email notifications, which will come across the front screen. It's also very easy to add users and add groups. And so let's say that you wanna create a new user within the Nucleo software. You can just click add user. If that user, let's just say it was John Smith, Nucleos will automatically create the username for them. And then you can specify whether that's gonna be a student or an admin. And then you can also tell Nucleos to auto-generate a password for you. And it's really as simple as that, as creating new users within the software. And you can also see an example of some of the existing users as well. It's also very simple to add groups. So let's say you're an education director and you wanna add different students to be able to access certain education content within the software. I'm gonna show you a little bit of that later, but you can create groups here. And these are just some uh, pilot groups that we've made in the app, but you can click create group, name the group, create the group. It's very, very easy. So through the home screen, I really wanna bring your attention to our course content and library. This is where all of the educational content will live. And so Nucleos provides a host of different academic, vocational, and social emotional wellness tools as Ian referenced. Um, and this is where you're able to access that. So um, this isn't an exhaustive list by any means, but just for the purpose of the demo, we've added in these different content providers. And so as you can see, you've got ACT Work Keys, Khan Academy, GCF Global, Desmos. And one of the, the main benefits of Nucleos is that we're, as Ian said, we're truly a systems aggregator, right? So we can seamlessly sit on top of any type of LMS, whether that's Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle. Um, and if you want to, well, I should say Nucleos allows you to tailor make this educational experience because we can bring in virtually any kind of web-based application, right, through APIs. And so um, I wanna go ahead and click on GCF Global. So with this, um, you can go ahead and click launch app um, as an admin. You can go ahead and see that here. Um, you can also go to the user access. I'm going to show you uh, on the learner side, opening up the apps, but with the admin side, this is where you would specify, um, you know, having specific users and groups there. Um, you can go to information about the app. Let me bring your attention to uh, the learner records. So Ian brought up a great point that Nucleos creates a unified learning record that can move with students, right, all the way from parole to reentry. And so this gives you a, a snapshot of students' progress. And so with this, you can see the courses that they've completed and also the amount of time that they're spending in the apps. So one of the other huge benefits of using Nucleos is not just having, you know, um, a solution towards canned content, but it's robust education and training with the unified learning records, also including the data, right? Having access to the data, a part of your agency, a part of your department, data is key to be able to see what's working, what's not working, where are our students spending their time, and how can I share this with students, right? So you can see, um, I pulled up James McFarland's uh, snapshot here. He's taken finance and capital markets, basic capital structure differences, price and market capitalization. Some of these are ringing a bell from when some of us were in school or maybe some of the classes that maybe we even need to retake ourselves. But, uh, you know, economics, um, short selling, what have you. So you can really see the snapshot of what that, what that student is taking. You can also pull up their progress and goals. So you can see it here that James is spending, you know, X amount of time in GCF Global and Canvas um, down to 
the specific courses that he's taking, the last activity, uh, so forth and so on. You can also add goals for your learners as well. You can name the goal, describe it, and then Nucleos allows you to pair that goal with an education, whatever kind of education um, you're using, right? So if that's Khan Academy, if that's Zoom, you can tailor make those goals there. Um, one more thing about the admin view that I wanted to bring your attention to before I show you the learner view is group learning reports. So if you're an education director on this call or someone at your agency, um, this is something to really get excited about because you no longer have to manually go through learning records. If you've got siloed systems, maybe that you're working with and you wanna pull everything under one house, the Nucleos is the solution for you. So you can go to the group. This is just one of the groups that we pulled up earlier. Um, and what happens is if you're, let's say you're an education director and you want to, you know, bring together all of the data across multiple different learning records, you can just click save as PDF and in just a number of seconds, Nucleos automatically aggregates that content for you and it saves it as a PDF um, to your computer. So you can just open PDF um, and it will show you the learners that we have in the group, Anthony, Demira, Lorenzo, Craig, the amount of time that they're using um, in the different applications. Um, and then you could go down and see um, an example of the different learning records that they're going through as well. So what does this mean? What does this mean? Taking a look at this, these learning records, pulling group reports, what, what is the benefit here? Well, Glad you asked. The benefit there is that uh, this really makes the data actionable, right? And so if you're tracking milestone release credits, if you're tracking participation time, um, if you want to save time with your ID to IT department, um, you know, not having to pull all of this manually, um, that's the benefit here of pulling these group reports and really having a system that brings in everything um, in-house um, that you can pull up um, really just from the click of a button, right? Um, and so with that, I want to bring up the learner view as we've seen the admin view. So the learner view is very simple to the, uh, or very similar to the admin view into which the layout is very similar. Um, of course, they don't have that administrative capability to enable or disable courses. So, but they can still go to, of course, this course content and library, they can pull it up. I want to bring your attention to what it looks like. So as Ian um, gave us some great insight into the app is that Nucleos does support single sign-on. We can take care of the whitelisting for you, all while providing this education in a very secure way. So it's 100% locked down on the app through the cloud. Um, and I also would like to note that it's not any like light version of a site or any kind of like smaller version on the site. Nucleos puts you on the full site on the full account, right? So this has logged me in uh, via single sign-on. I can go to topics, I can go to career planning, math, I can go to different, uh, you know, internet skills, online safety. I'm able to access that right here. And I also uh, wanted to bring your attention to this top. Can everyone see this header bar here at the top with the Nucleos logo? So with that, everything is being filtered through our middleware solution, right? So any kind of communication, there's, there's not gonna be any kind of communication communication between uh, students. That's gonna be 100% locked down in this environment. And also we're able to restrict the live internet access while leveraging the content. And we're logging all the communication. So any messaging that's gonna be allowed is only between the instructors and the applications with students, that can also be flagged, searchable, um, and the message history across all the applications is tracked. Right, And so Ian mentioned a little bit about our intrusion detection systems, IDS and, and IPS, our prevention systems. So we're automatically automating the monitoring and threat detection for, you know, any network uh, events that could seem unordinary or, you know, anything that would seem like it needs to be tracked. We can do that automatically here, 24-7 um, threat detection. And so with this, within this environment, um, students can also you know, if we go back to the home screen, to the course content in the library, they can pick their courses, they can add goals as well. And so Nucleos really brings all of this under one house. It makes the information to which they're accessing, you know, very simple for them to pull it up, 
um, create it, um, and for your agency to really have a tool that really brings everything under one house. And so, with that- so um, what um, Caleb has brought up is ultimately a system that provides reporting. It's got that all important security, and ultimately it's the integration. And if you think about this, we could actually provide to you, to your colleges, to your community colleges, to K through 12, the platform with nothing in it. And we would then integrate with everything that they want to be able to provide to to your uh, incarcerated individuals. So it really can be that secure platform. Uh, It can be very inexpensive, of course, to, uh, to implement as well. In addition to that, you've got the secure cloud. So everything is cloud-based. We use a a Google Cloud solution. Um, It is um, typical that we're interfacing with a wide area network. If you don't have uh, that wide area network, we can actually provide ISP access uh, very inexpensively. And then of course, the installation of a local area network. And we have a full suite of solutions, but we typically lean on Cisco, Meraki, uh, and Wi-Fi 6 to be able to uh, light up classrooms as well as uh, tablets and other solutions that complement this. Um, and again, we see that we're, we're using exactly the tablet uh, solutions that you would want. Ta- uh, the tablets are Chromebooks, typically. Uh, we do have an Android solution being developed. We have laptops out there that you may have. You've got Chromebooks out there that you may have. You've got computer labs that are already set up. We'd love to interface with those. And then we have a range of charging solutions that are all designed to be cutting edge. Uh, We even have one that does uh, uh, sanitization of the devices uh, in 30 minutes. So you put them into the cabinet, close it up, and UVC rays actually uh, decontaminate the devices. So we have a full range of hardware solutions. We'd love to talk to you more about that. Um, And I would be um, reticent in not thanking all of our partners. Uh, We have a a great deal of partners for content. If you need us to bring content to you, uh, we can do so. Or if you want us to bring applications to you, we can do so. Um, So this is just really a sampling of our our, uh, partners. The other great thing is if you already have those licenses, Uh, And a lot of folks do. So they already have Zoom licenses that are enterprise. uh, So it's ostensibly free to extend it. We can extend that um, out uh, free integration. Zoom, uh, the um, uh, Cisco GoToMeeting, et cetera, Teams. And uh, with that, I'd like to just uh, pause and go over to you all and uh, request that you send it, give us your questions. And Arlene was asking, what vocational programs could you potentially provide? Yeah, so we have access to a lot of vocational programs and the, really the sky's the limit. So it's it, it, when you look at the uh, GCF Global, uh, the Goodwill Community Foundation, they have vocational. If you have access to vocational education through a local institution, we would love to work with them so we can provide the content and, and one-on-one will uh, provide you with a full listing. In fact, Caleb, do you have any uh, direct uh, directive on the vocational outside of GCF that we provide? We do. That's a great question too, Arlene. Um, so one of the ones that we um, recommend is essential ed. So that that provides a lot of GED testing, uh, the TABE test. Um, also, you know, there's also Khan Academy, which has a lot of great content as well. Uh, oh yeah, Google- actually our integration again with Coursera provides 10,000 courses that are um, all of them leading up to vocational. Uh, we have technology courses through Pearson. Um, so you can actually get certifications in technology uh, all the way from office through to uh, being a network administrator, security system administrator, etc. cetera. Uh, Kevin's asking, will it make a difference if the facility contracts with a local school dis- district or if they have an internal school district? Absolutely not. Um, So for schools, um, if you have your internal school district, uh, what we can do is actually uh, leverage that to do, for instance, the FAFSA application for Pell 
Um, so there'd be a little bit of bit more time to do education on how to do the application. What you would need to, to get Pell granted uh, education, work with a local institution that could do uh, post, um, post-secondary education, for instance. Uh, community colleges are very eager to do this as well as universities, but it doesn't make a difference if we're working. So we're working with a lot of schools, believe it or not, that want to be behind the wall. And so we're helping them with our technology to deliver their classes in a blended learning solution using their content, their learning management systems, their instructors. Um, so we just become the technology facilitator for that, if you will. Uh, and doing demos and we can actually provide all of the solutions that we've uh, spoken to you about on a free program basis yeah. um, with potentially your staff or actually use uh, a low risk offender housing unit. We've got a couple of pilots going on, for instance, in pre-release. Uh, we have a major implementation going on in uh, a number of DOCs and in the islands, which we're really excited about because that'll go live in, uh, in January, February. So we'll be out in the islands with that program. But uh, it's really exciting what we're able to do and bring to bear. And uh, this is innovative and, uh, and truly um, bringing the same quality of education that we have potentially K through 12, secondary and post-secondary to uh, your incarcerated population.